Shri Vasanita Sindhu class, November 1st, 2010. And uh, we're discussing Bhava Bhakti. And yesterday we heard about the uh, how powerful it is to hear Hari Kata, Rasika Kata from the pure and advanced devotees. And how simply by that process, because this is what Narada Muni did, by that process of nam, of hearing Harikata Shravanadasha in his association with great devotees, one can attain bhav by the practice of Vaidhi Sadhana. And in text 13 it says, Purane Nati Shastri Cha Dvayos Tu Rati Bhavayo. Samanartataya Hyatra Dvayam Aikena Lakshitam. In the Puranas and Natya Shastra, Bhav and Rati have the same meaning. Thus, in this work, they will have the same meaning. Sometimes people get confused because these words are used interchangeably. And um, they don't know whether they're talking about. When it's, in other words, whenever you see the word rati, it generally means bhav. Just translate it in your mind, bhav. Because we know bhava sakti prema, or we, sakti bhava prema. So Rupa Goswami is saying that on the basis of other shastras, the shastras on drama, and the shastras on, and the pranas and drama shastras or natya shastras, they also sometimes say rati va va rati rati va, but it means the same thing. It means that that uh, preliminary stage to prema, which is almost now the prema. Actually, what I was intended to do is read one tika from Nectar Devotion and from Prabhupada's book. Lord Kapila says, My dear mother, when a person is actually in association with pure devotees, the sublime potency of my devotional service can be experienced. That's Prabhupada's translation of this verse. The verse actually says it. <laughs> That's very interesting. Satam prasangam mamavirya samvido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata. Literally, the verse is telling in third canto, I think Uddhava is speaking maybe to Vidura, or Maitreya Vidura, a bit like this. He's saying, associating with pure devotees and hearing Harikata is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear. And by cultivating this Harikata, three things happen. One develops his... his uh, it becomes attached to Krishna, a sakti, comes to the level of bhava, then prema. And Prabhupada says that, very nice, he gives the translation, it's quoted, he says that, when you're actually in association with pure devotees, the sublime potency of devotional service can be experienced. So in other words, the sublime potency of devotional service means the amazing and wonderful, sublime means wonderful, amazing, majestic potency, that's the meaning of sublime. Grand, grand, glorious, wonderful, magnificent potency of Bhakti Devi can be experienced. When you experience Bhakti Devi, what happens then? It says you can, in association, the sublime potency of my devotional service can be experienced. You can, ex in, by here, when you're in association with devotees, and although Prabhupada doesn't say it in his translation, when you associate with devotees, they speak Harikata. And when they speak Harikata, Bhakti Devi is flowing from their mouth. Bhakti Devi is flowing in their words, mixed in their words. So then the effect or the potency of Bhakti Devi brings about attachment in your heart and brings about bhava and brings prem. And Prabhupada just summarized that. Then he puts it and then he gives a tikka to that. In other words, when a pure devotee speaks, his words act upon the hearts of the audience. So now the converse can also be there. If one is not a pure devotee, when he speaks, the words maybe don't act on the hearts. They act on the ears of the audience. 
and they act on the mind of the audience and maybe not the heart. Or maybe that's one thing you could conclude. Or you can conclude because they're also speaking about the Shastra that the words have some effect on the heart, but not the same effect. There's different ways you conclude it. Conclude. But definitely there's a difference. There's a quality of difference. Otherwise, that's why there's hierarchy of devotees. Everyone's had the experience. One devotee leads kirtan, another devotee leads kirtan has a different effect. Like Lokanath Swami, he's a famous kirtan leader and a great devotee of the Lord. And he sings Hare Krishna or chants and everybody goes wild, isn't it? And it doesn't matter whether, in, they don't have to be Indian to go wild. <laughs> Russians are, and uh, so what is it? It, it it's, it's because he's Indian we're going wild or it's because he's a sannyasi we're going wild? Just because he's a guru, we're going wild? I don't think so, because we have lots of, there's lots of them around. <laughs> lots of Indian gurus around. <laughs> but there's something special about, something special mixed up in a sound when he's chanting Hare Krishna. You know, and that's, that's Bhakti Devi, that's purity, that's potency, purity is a force, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, you see the effect. Don't you? At least I, 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 I've been 24 years in Delhi Temple. I've heard lots of kirtans. <laughs> I've been in lots of programs. And when Loknath told me time to time comes, it's like, and you don't, it's, oh, it's not like, oh, he's here, we have to dance, or here's, he's here, we have to chant. <laughs> it's, it's he's singing, we want to chant. He's here, we want to dance. <laughs> it just, it automatically happens. So one can understand it and Aindra Puru and Niranjan, so many great, devote, great devotees. What makes them great is the purity of their hearts. <laughs> it's not that they have big, 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 you know, anything big, but they have big hearts. That's what makes someone great is a big heart. And because they're devotees, they have big spiritual hearts. So that heart comes out when they chant or speak. In other words, when a pure devotee, Prabhupada says, so the Prabhupada, his translation of verse is extremely like uh, rustic. And once he's actually zipped up all these words into a few words, that the whole thing about he says he says the verse is quite long, isn't it? Satam prasangan mama virya samvedo. All those words, five times four, twenty words. Probably put in a few words. Oh, uh, hmm, Kapila Devahuti. Kabila speaking. When a person as associates with pure devotees, the sublime potency of bhakti can be experienced. <laughs> so Prabhupada said that's the translation, quote unquote, in the book. So then you have to what is that what what does it mean that you experience the sublime potency? It means you get attached to Krishna. It means you get attained Bali, attain Prima. Then Prabhupada unfolds it a little bit, then Prabhupada gives his tikka, his commentary on the shloka, as Vishnath gives commentaries on the shloka, Jiva Goswami and other acharyas. So this is Prabhupada's tikka on the Bhagavatam 3, 25, 25, which he gives us in Nectar Devotion, page 133, Ecstatic Love, Pava Bhakti. In other words, in other words, Prabhupada's saying, in other words, in my, in my own words, now I'm going to describe in my own words, Srila A.C. Bhakti Nanda Swami Prabhupada, I'm going to describe what Kapila Muni is teaching his mother Devahuti about association and the power and potency and effect of associating with advanced devotees. In other words, when a pure devotee speaks, his words act upon the hearts of the audience. What is the secret of hearing and chanting? A professional speaker cannot impress transcendental ecstasy within the hearts of the listeners. It's such a beautiful phrase. A professional speaker, all these Bhagavad seven-day platform speakers, seven-day professional Bhagavad Septa speakers, they sing very wonderfully and they look very attractive and even do a nice show. They have all kinds of drama and they have props and stages and Gopal Deities and they, and they do Abhishek and, and all kinds of things. They dress up some boy as Bhamana Dev and bring him out when they talk about the Eighth Canto and all these kind of, uh, it's a real song and dance nowadays and I've seen my own eyes here in Vrindavan, all these kind of displays, which I just described some of them. 
uh, which is not, is not exactly what Sukadeva Goswami did with Parikshit Maharaj. It's a highly modified and stylized, highly modified, stylized, modernized, Bollywoodized presentation of the Bhagavad simply to cater to and satisfy the whims and wishes of their audience of Marwaris and Daniwalas so they can get some big bucks. Professional speakers, money people. Give a good show and get a good get a good donation. Flute players, tabla players, synthesizer. It's an absolute must if you want. If you want nowadays, if you want to do Bhagavad Gita, you have to have a Yamaha synthesizer. <laughs> you have to have a tabla player and a flute player. You don't need any card tolling. Tabla player, absolute must. Synthesizer must. You can do away with the flute player because you can hit the key on the synthesizer and play your flute. But this is the minimum. <laughs> Imagine Shukadev, hey, where's the tabla player? Do, 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 do. Om Namo Bhagavati. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> so Tam Prasangam. Mamiri Asambado. They have all the synthesizer. Nice joke. Kali Yuga is all just a big, you know, song and dance. Take anything and Bollywoodize it. Make a dollar, make a buck. A professional speaker cannot impress transcendental ecstasy within the hearts of the listeners. This is powerful. However, when a realized soul who is engaged in the service of the Lord is speaking, he has the potency to inject spiritual life within the audience. One should therefore seek association with such pure, unalloyed devotees and by such association and, and service, association and service, a neophyte devotee will certainly develop attachment, love and devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So as often the Acharyas do, which we've repeatedly been sharing with everyone, is that they take the verse in Sanskrit, especially Vishwanath, and they rephrase it in their tika. Jiva Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Vishwanath, etc. They're, like we read, oh, here's Jiva Goswami's commentary. And it's just the same thing, only it's a little bit emphasized here and there, or stretched out this way, that. Or Bhakti Nautakura, for that matter. So Prabhupada, in, in Prabhupada's tika explanation, he has included all the points of the actual Sanskrit verse, because the Sanskrit verse talks about this, that you'll get attachment, love, and devotion. The Sanskrit actually says, Shraddha, Ratir, and Bhaktir. So some people may translate that, that as faith, attachment, and devotion. But Shraddha, as the other Charyas say, Shraddha in this verse means Asakti, because how can, how can, you know, because this is the sequence, first there's Asakti, and then after Asakti is Ratir, Bhav, and after Bhav is, because it says Rati and Bhakti. So after Rati, which is Bhav, comes Prema, not Bhakti. Bhakti. So Shraddha Ratir Bhaktir in the verse means Asakti Bhava and Prema. Asakti means attachment. And then ex and then he says uh, love and devotion. Or love and pure pure love, let's say. This is very nice. I wanted to share that. So now the the uh, <clears throat> verse today. And so, if that's it, we just translate, not text 14. Uttamana urtam bala kurvati nati utsaka hari pritya chatam sarvam ratram evat yavai evat yava hat hayat. So we heard. He said, Bhava can arise from the mercy of God or by sadhana. And Bhava attained by sadhana can be attained by Vaidhi sadhana, by Raghunuga sadhana. So he heard about Bhava attained by Vaidhi sadhana. And the example of a person who did it is Narada Muni. And how did he do it is explained specifically the actual anecdote of how he did it. He did Padasevanam, served the Mahajans. And he heard Harikata from them. And because they were pure hearted and very advanced, the Harikata had great potency. And because he was uh, submissive and attentive and, and developed, he quickly developed Shraddha, 
rati and bhakti are. By that, in the, within four months, he had come to the level of bhava and prema. And then there's a supporting verse given from the third canto, Satampra Sangam from Virya Sampado, to show the tattva behind this experience. So when Rupa Goswami is explaining how to attain bhava by Vaiji Sadhana, he, there's nine forms of devotional service. So by executing any, any one of these nine forms of devotional service, Vaiji Sadhana, one can attain bhava. But he has chosen to emphasize hearing Shravanadasha as the prescribed and primary means to attain bhava through the path of Vaidhi Sadhana. Hearing and service. Hearing from the pure advanced Vaishnavas and serving them. Because that is the example of Narada Muni's life. And in, in four, four uh, very fast months he attained bhava by serving the Vaishnavas, Padasevanam, and hearing Harikata. Very nice, not difficult. But he heard, he was awake. <laughs> he was awake for four months. When they spoke, he was wide awake, wrapped it. He heard with attention and taste. He relished it, he liked it, he enjoyed it. Taste means you want it. Taste means you like it. Taste means you enjoy it. He wanted to hear, he liked to hear. And he asked, can I listen? Can I listen? I'm a little kid. I'm only five years old. Can I listen to your topics? You're big boys. You're big men. Or maybe I can't understand. Or maybe you're talking too high things. Or maybe I'm not qualified to hear. May I hear? Yeah, sure. Sit down. You're a nice kid. So he was like, oh, they let, they're letting me sit down and hear. So it doesn't say anything in this description of Narada Muni attaining bhava doesn't describe anything he did when he wasn't with, with these, you know, he maybe he slept here and there, whatever he did. But when he was with, but when he was with these Bhagavats, because obviously they weren't speaking day and night, although it says he heard incessantly, for four months he heard incessantly, so that means a lot. They were speaking a lot, but they probably slept. So Narada Muni went off somewhere and ate something as a little child, and he slept here and there, like kids do, eight or ten hours or whatever they do. But when it came time to hearing, he was like wide awake. And for those two hours or three hours or five hours. And whenever he had, whenever there was an opportunity, he, he did some service. He was, oh, can I, he would ask him, he'd say, can I, may I wash, may I wash your pots and pans or this or that, if they were cooking for themselves. Then he said, may I, then he would ask him, may I take your remnants? You can read in first canto Bhagavatam. He was always asking, please, I know you don't, you don't want to, anyone to take your remnants. There wasn't any remnants, there was just something that, like this. But even just to scrape something, because it's not like they're leaving big piles of rice and dal. Yeah, you're a little kid, have a good time. He was begging them, please, may I take a little bit of your remnants? And I said, all right. So then, so now he's going to, so that's, so he wants to give us, the, at least Rupa Swami is recommending at least he's just for the primary example he's citing for Bhava attained by Sadhana, he's showing this. So by that we can understand the importance of hearing in association with advanced devotees, how important it is. Hearing and Parasevanam, serving. As, as a, we could say, the primary means, one of the most powerful means to attain Bhava by Vaidhi Sadhana is to hear. Now he describes Bhava by Raganuga. This verse, Uttamanodra Tambala, Kurvanti Nirtya Utsuka, Hari Pritya Chattam, Sarvam Vratram Evat Evaha Hayat. This is from Padma Pran. Now, this is about the girl Chandrakanti. A young girl having great joy in the heart and being very enthusiastic to dance spent the whole night dancing in order to please the Lord. And then uh, there's another translation we have here. Oh, it, actually, this is a word for word because it's these. If you take it just by this particular translation, there are different translations. I mean, it's probably. I wonder how Prama translates. I'm just curious because in my nectar devotion classes on those tapes, I went into all these. Now I'm just sticking to this book more, but I went through nectar devotion. I gave two CDs on this nectar devotion. I went more thoroughly into Prabhat's book was supporting from the other side. 
And Prabhupada translates it like this. In the Padma Puran, there is a story about a neophyte devotee who, in order to raise herself to the ecstatic platform, danced all night to invoke the Lord's grace upon her. So that's, that's all he says. <clears throat> a little bit. But then the word for word is quite significant. Because the, the, uh, the, the word says, itam manoratam, manoratam. Manorath means her mind was on the chariot, chariot of the mind, Manorath. So it means that her in other words, usually the mind is jumping everywhere. Right? Like some little kid, like say you want to take your little kid on a vacation. He's okay, come on, get in the car. And, and you get him just to the door and he, he just gets out of your hands. I don't want to go. <laughs> he runs away and he goes over here. Hey, come here. And you grab him and you bring him out, get in the car. And he runs away. So he won't stay in one place. You want, you want him to go in the car to take him to your grandmother's house or, or his grandmother's house. But he doesn't want to, so he runs away, he resists. So the mind is, never stays in one place. Like you watch a monkey, you see a monkey sitting on the roof. You, and before you finish one round, he's already gone somewhere else. <laughs> so the, they say the monkey mind, chanchala man, chanchala himana krishna. So the mind is jumping like a monkey. So it, it says manorat means that it's somehow she was able to, when you, manorat means you put the mind in a rath. Putting it, rath means car, cherry, yantra. That means, oh, you actually, you've been able to corral the mind or catch the mind or rope in the mind and keep him in one place long enough to go somewhere. Because a rath means a vehicle which takes you from one place to another. That's a rath or a car. So you should mind, you can't, can't make, you can't take the mind anywhere. The mind's just taking you here and taking you there. Hey, wait a minute, mind, get in this manoratam, and now we're going to go somewhere. You see? This is the meaning of the word, manoratam. Very graphic. And there's a verse in the Bhagavatam, the chariot of the mind, that is always carrying us all over the atma, all over the place. But she said, uttam, no, ittam, ittam manoratam bala. Thus determined in the mind. So she was, the word manoratam means she was determined. In other words, her mind was fixed in the chariot of her determination, not going to go any side. The mind was not going to get out of that car. The mind couldn't run here or run there or jump here because his seatbelt was on. Fixed in the car. So, it's, so it's, it's thus determined in mind. The word manoratam means determined in mind. The mind was now fixed. You can make some progress, go somewhere. It signifies the earnestness in spiritual practices, or it actually indicates sadhana abhinivation. So when we're describing this young girl, she was actually manaratam, which means she was sadhana abhinivashana, which we described earlier, was that Raghunuga is characterized by intense absorption in sadhana. So this... Uh, this was described earlier in verse 6 through 8. It means absorption in sadhana. And then it says she was very enthusiastic to dance. And the word there is nritya utsuka. Ut, uts, utsuka. Ut, like we say, utsaha. You have, I think, in Hindi, utsaha. It means enthusiastic. To what? Dance. She was very enthusiastic to dance. This phrase, enthusiastic to dance, indicates that she was on a platform of ruchi or taste. So the acharyas are explaining this lady was not, these are some of the qualifications. What was she exactly? Who, what was this Chandrakanti? She was, her mind was fixed and absorbed in her devotional expression, sudden avinivation, manoratam. And then it says, nitya utsuka, and she was very enthusiastic to dance, this indicates that she had great taste. She was the level of Ruchi. She was very enthusiastic. She had a great taste for performing devotion or bhakti. She spent the whole night dancing in order to please the Lord. Hari Pritya, Priti, Tatsavam. So Hari Priti means for the pleasure of Lord Hari. This indicates Asakti. She was then on as Asakti. Yeah. And and then uh, D, this is a phrase, Ratrim Evat Yavahad Yavahad Yate. Yep. 
jav ahate, aha, ahayat. Ratri means night, as you know, and evat yava, yava means all night. This means, this indicates bhava, the symptoms of never wasting a moment. So now, Jiva Goswami explains that by the influence of the deity form, she developed rag, similar to that of Krishna's dear associates. So what happened, the story is in Padma a little more elaborated. She had a deity of Krishna, this Chandrakanti, and she she was reading about how the gopis would spend all night dancing with Krishna and Rasa dance. So it was Ikadasi, I think it was Ikadasi. So she, it says you should do Jagran on Ikadasi, you should stay up all night. So she said, well, gee, the gopis would used to stay up all night. So she had Raga, she, she, this, is, so this is an example of Raganuga Bhakti. And in other words, what is the principle here? By Raganuga Sana Bhakti, one can attain Bhav. So what's the proof that she attained Bhav? That this last line, she spent the whole night dancing, never wasting a moment. And so from her rag, her rag was she was intensely attached to the Brijvasis. The Raghunuga Bhakti means to follow the Brijvasis. Yes, everyone agrees? So she was intensely attached to follow the Brijvasis. Which Brijvasis? The gopis of Vrindavan. And what were they doing? Dancing all night. So she had rag for them and att attraction. She had, she had ruchi for dancing. She, had she was absorbed in the sadhana of what? A pleasing Lord by how? Dancing like the gopis. The gopis in their siddhadeyas are dancing for the pleasure of the Lord. I want to dance for the pleasure of the Lord, my sadhaka deha. I have, I have a, and I have a taste for this. So, and what's the proof that she had a taste? Because she was enthusiastic to dance. Like, oh, Haridas Thakur attained perfection by chanting the holy name. Oh, I, and I, then I, then I have, I want to, you know, I, I have attachment to Haridas Thakur. And I, want, and I have taste for chanting, so I want to chant and attain perfection. So, so she did this for her deity. By the influence of the deity, she developed rag, similar to that of Krishna's dear associates. So she had a beautiful deity of Krishna, Merlihar, Manohar. And she read about the gopis, ple the gopis pleased their Manohar, they ple pleased their Merli Manohar by dancing all night in the Rasa dance. Well, I have my Merli Manohar in the form of deity. Because rag, marg also means you worship deities. But with rag, not with, not with the you know, with rules and regulations, with rag. Because she thought, well, she thought this, because she's a Madhya Madhikari. So she understands Krishna's in a deity. Krishna, you're, you're, Krishna, you're my, you're my Murlidhar. The gopis said, they're Murlidhar, you're my Murlidhar. They danced all night and they pleased him. He was so happy, so I'm going to dance all night and please you. I'm following the, I'm following the footsteps of the Braja Gopis. And so she attained Bhav. This is a, the classic example from the Padma Purana, which is all cited there and cited here, and, in other, and also in Bhakti Sandarbha by Jiva Goswami. Among many women, the Lord has greatest affection for me. He dances with me while embracing. This is her thinking. She was thinking while she was dancing, just like the gopis. What were the gopis? She was so much tadatmika with the gopis and her sadhana, and her raganuga sadhana, she's following the gopis of Vrindavan. Braja, Braja Loka, it says, Braja Loka Anusarata, Braja Loka Anusarata. One should follow the, Braja, the residence of Vrindavan. So she was thinking, the gopis are dancing all night with their Murlidhar, with their Krishna, and they're thinking, Krishna is dancing only alone with me, and I'm dancing so wonderfully, and he's embracing me around my neck. So she was thinking the same thing. She was totally absorbed in this, in this mood. And then Jiva Goswami explains that very interesting point. He says, she, it should be understood that Chandra Kanti, or the young girl that's mentioned in this verse, must be an expansion of that celebrated Radha, who embodies that eternal, great eternal Shakti. Radharani decided to make this girl her Sakhi when the girl reached the final stage. And by that, by her mercy, and by her mercy, considered that the girl achieving all perfection by the sadhana was not different from herself. Therefore, Padma Puran describes that this young girl thought herself as the only lover of Krishna, identifying herself as Radha. So this is the, uh, this was the mercy, the Radharani, in other words, this girl was thinking like Radharani, 
and was following Radharani as her, as her uh, exemplar, as her Brijbasi to emulate and follow in footsteps. Because Radharani is the supreme lover of Krishna and Krishna was embracing her around the neck and dancing with her and said, oh, Krishna is also embracing me around the neck and dancing with me. So Radharani was so pleased that she was following her and identifying with her bhav and dancing all night and, and showing intense sakti and that she, she blessed her, her potency entered into her. What is her potency? Vishuddha sattva, a bhakti, the combination of bhakti and samvit, and that's bhava. So we have said earlier that how can we attain bhava? We can attain bhava by practicing vaiti sadhana, getting the blessings of Krishna by practicing vaiti sadhana or ragnuga sadhana. So even in the course of practicing Vaidhi Sadhana, you still get the blessings of devotees. Narada Muni is blessed by the great Mahabhagavats. And you're practicing Raghunuga Sadhana, then you also get come to the level of Baba. We're practicing Raghunuga Sadhana. But unless the Baba Bhakti, unless that issue the suffer from the hearts of the eternal associates or the Guru Parampara enters in our heart, we don't obtain Baba. We have to attract their attention by our sadhana abhinivation. By her total absorption in sadhana. In this case, she was totally, Chandrakanti was totally absorbed in Raghunuga sadhana and identifying with the mood of Radharani, identifying with the service and dancing for the pleasure of her deity. She was doing Sri Murti Seva, one of the five most important things. She was doing Bhagavad Shravan, following the teachings of the Bhagavatam. And she was following the footsteps of Radharani and the gopis dancing in Raslila. And she pleased and attracted the heart of Radharani herself. So Radharani, Radharani, she, Radharani herself, she can also give Baba and Prema. It can come directly from Radharani. It can come from Krishna. It can come from Lita, Vishaka, Rupavati, or anyone in the Guru Parampara. Any resident of Vrindavan, if they want to bestow their mercy on us, that's how we attain Baba and Prema. Sadhana plus mercy. Karya plus Kripa, remember? Well, they showed her the endeavor, but then she got, she needed the mercy of Krishna, the mind, the mind Damodar. So Chandrakanti is an example. This is a classic example. It's very interesting that Radha decided to make the girl her sucky when the girl reached the final stage. So she, by her own, she came, she danced. She, she had ruchi, she was attached to the gopis, she had taste for the gopis' services and sevas and dancing. She was attached to Radha and Krishna, Hari Pritya, Hari Priti, Hari Pritya. She had a sakti. She wanted to please Hari, the gopis want to please Hari, and she had no other ambition in her life, and no other engagement, no other desire than to please Hari. And she thought, well, how can I please Hari? I, I just, Oh, but how do the gopis please? Well, they gave him the most, the, the gopis gave the most pleasure to Hari, Hari Pritya, at the night of the Rasa dance. And tonight is the full moon night of the Rasa dance. This is Sharad Purnima. And my, my deity is right in front of me. My gopi nath is right here. Well, why don't I just dance all night? That taste, that ruchi came in her heart. Full, oh, Radharani, you were dancing. And I'm dancing, yes, my... Gopinath, you're only dancing with me, and there's no other sucky, and you're embracing me around the neck just like you embrace Radha. In fact, I'm even more attracted than Radharani. This is our vow to please Krishna. And Radharani is thinking, this is very nice. This girl's so much absorbed, and she's gone so high in her intense attachment for my beloved Hari. So my heart is calling out to, yes. I will make her an object of my mercy. Radha, Rani, Ki, Jai. We say, Karuna Mai Radha. She's merciful, she gives kindness. So here's an example of someone attaining Bhav by Raghunuga Sadhana who received direct mercy of Radharani, Chandrakanti. Jiva Goswami says, Radha decided to make the girl, who's the girl? The girl's a sadhaka. Who are we? We're sadhakas. What did the girl want? The girl wanted to live in Vrindavan and Gopideha. And serve Radha and Krishna. What do we want? We want to live in Vrindavan and go be Deha and serve Radha and Krishna. So that girl became an object of Radharani's mercy. So can we become an object of Radharani's mercy? 
Yes, according to Rupa Goswami.